In the early 1960s, the pharmaceutical company behind the drug thalidomide tried to convince Dr. Francis Kelsey, a scientist from the Food and Drugs Administration, to approve their drug. A stubborn stickler of a medical officer in the Food and Drug Administration, Dr. Francis Kelsey, she refused to approve sale of the drug in the United States. Thalidomide was eventually blamed for causing birth defects in tens of thousands of children around the world, with many more dying at birth. Thanks to the diligence of Dr. Kelsey and the FDA, children in the US were spared. The FDA has a tough job. It needs to ensure that drugs are safe. The decision it makes are life-altering, in most cases for the best. But not always. FDA failures have been blamed for contributing to the opioid epidemic. Oh, she's overdosed. And giving false hope to Alzheimer's patients by approving a costly and unproven drug. This is in fact a tremendous controversy in the scientific and medical world. Unlike the time when Dr. Kelsey worked at the FDA, the federal agency is now much cosier with the industry it is supposed to regulate. Pharmaceutical companies with lots of money and questionable practices. From lobbying. Drug companies and the insurance companies have spent four and a half billion dollars on lobbying and campaign contributions. To advertising. Ask your doctor if Mirbetric is right for you. And price gouging. Everybody is doing it. it. In capitalism, you try to get the highest price for that you can for a product. Today, the FDA's mission is more critical than ever. We're still not completely 100% sold on the inoculation. Wake up, New York! So why is the FDA making these costly mistakes, endangering public trust? We will not comply! This is how the FDA needs to do a better job at protecting Americans from the greed of some pharmaceutical companies. In 1995, Purdue Pharma released a powerful pain medication called OxyContin, downplaying the drug's addictive properties. Less than 1% of patients taking opioids actually become addicted. Since then, more than half a million people have died of opioid-related overdoses in the US. Can you breathe? Can you hear me, honey? <laughs> Thousands of lawsuits have been filed against Purdue Pharma and other opioid makers. The global settlement announced today involves the company pleading guilty to three felony counts for defrauding the United States. But the FDA has escaped much of the blame. Had the Food and Drug Administration done its job properly, I don't believe that the United States would be in the midst of an epidemic of opioid addiction. OxyContin's misleading label, which downplayed the risk of abuse, was approved by the FDA. Purdue Pharma used this seal of approval to aggressively market the drug as safe and effective for chronic pain. I had um, a daughter who was prescribed OxyContin and she died as a result. She had a backache and her doctor prescribed it. Had FDA enforced the law, Purdue never would have been allowed to promote its products for these uh, conditions. Since I've been on this new pain medication, I have not missed one day of work and my boss really appreciates that. As a result, opioid prescriptions surged. Why didn't the FDA do a better job at safeguarding American lives? Why the FDA failed is difficult to say. You know, doctors across the country were hearing that patients are suffering needlessly because of an overblown fear of addiction and, and the compassionate thing to do is to prescribe opioids more aggressively. They don't wear out, they go on working. They do not have serious medical side effects. It's possible that some of the FDA officials were influenced by this same campaign, a campaign promoted by the pharmaceutical industry. And so maybe you could give some of these officials the benefit of the doubt. In 2002, as the dangers of OxyContin became clearer. Eventually, it stopped working. It was uh, probably the most unbelievable, excruciating, horrible time of my life. A meeting was held at the FDA to review the labeling of opioids. And at that meeting, you know, FDA really could have taken the right steps, but instead we saw FDA go in the opposite direction. 
it began approving a steady stream of new opioids. It's really hard to give FDA the, the benefit of the doubt because it was very clear that we had an emerging public health crisis caused by these drugs. The majority of advisors at this meeting had ties to pharmaceutical companies, including Purdue Pharma. Unlike Dr. Kelsey, some FDA officials had allowed themselves to be swayed by the industry it was supposed to be regulating. The relationship between the FDA and, and the regulated pharmaceutical industry changed. With the introduction of the Prescription Drug User Fee Act back in 1992, a law passed by our Congress in which the industry started funding the agency that reviews this drug. FDA went from an agency that was supposed to really police this industry to an agency that would need to provide the industry with good customer service. One FDA official who helped approve OxyContin went on to work for Purdue Pharma on a $400,000 a year contract. And he hasn't been the only one. I think we do need to do something about the revolving door. In other countries, uh, regulators are not able to go from a regulatory agency to working for the same regulated entities. This summer, the FDA gave the green light to a new Alzheimer's drug. To the potential breakthrough in the battle against Alzheimer's. On the market at $56,000 a year, there is little evidence the drug Agihelm actually works. Well, I'm a former chair and current member of the FDA advisory committee that reviewed this product. When we looked at all of the information, we simply felt that there was not sufficient evidence to get this product across the line. While the FDA usually rules in line with its advisory committee, in this instance, it didn't. And the next news I heard was that the FDA decided to approve it. It's an historic day for the company, and uh, I want to applaud the amazing job made by the, uh, all my colleagues. Biogen's staff had worked hard to get this drug approved. In 2019, a number of Biogen's clinical trials were aborted. The clinical trials failed to show that the drug works in terms of improving cognitive benefit, and that really should have ended it. But it didn't. Some Biogen staff began to organize unofficial meetings with the FDA. In June, July, and August of 2019, the FDA team and the Biogen team met or communicated almost daily. The interactions were just inappropriately close. And with that effort, they resurrected the drug and submitted it to the FDA for approval. Once again, the pharmaceutical industry had succeeded in winning over FDA officials. Essentially, the FDA uh, rescued this product uh, from the jaws of defeat. Close interactions between the FDA and companies it regulates are allowed. But despite growing concerns, politicians haven't taken steps to limit these. Congress has encouraged those interactions, again, through various laws passed over the last three decades. The problem is the pharmaceutical industry is, is a big gorilla. We're not taking it on because of the political muscle of pharma and the pharmaceutical companies. So FDA isn't alone in, uh, in responsibility for where we are. Today, there are three pharmaceutical and healthcare lobbyists for every member of Congress. Since 1998, big drug companies spent nearly $4 billion on lobbying. On behalf of Big Pharma, these lobbyists have successfully weakened the FDA. Members of Congress who passed legislation at the behest of industry lobbyists that weakened the agency. One night I got home from work and some member from the FDA called me. He was very angry with me because I was sending these emails to the FDA attorney generals. And he yelled into the phone, we don't have the manpower to police Purdue Pharma. That's when I started realizing Purdue Pharma had overwhelmed the FDA. Attempts have been made to hold Big Pharma to account. In 2007, Purdue Pharma pleaded guilty to federal criminal charges for downplaying OxyContin's addictive properties. We hope that Purdue's guilty plea will send a message that the Department of Justice will not allow uh, Big Pharma to engage in illegal conduct that corrupts the doctor-patient relationship. But unlike those who sell drugs on the streets, money has kept the Sackler family, who own Purdue Pharma, out of jail. They hired the Giuliani firm. Guess what? They didn't go to jail. 
just paid some fines. Purdue Pharma was recently dissolved in a bankruptcy settlement. Purdue has declared bankruptcy, but the Sackler family has not. They took $10 billion out of the company before it declared bankruptcy. Purdue Pharma and the Sacklers aren't the only ones in the industry driven by greed. How did the drug improve? If I were to look at a pill and analyze it from 2005, when it cost 215, and I was looked today at, at when it cost 763, would that pill be the same? The pill, the pill, the manufacturing for it would be the same. It makes me feel, you know, really bad. Because I'd hate for my daughter to have to hear about her mom dying from an overdose. Millions of families continue to be devastated by the opioid epidemic. But I would challenge anyone right now to say that they do not know a friend, neighbor, or family member who has not been affected. And many are worried about the impact of the FDA's approval of Adjahelm. Approval of a, of a drug like this that hasn't been shown to work is going to raise false hopes for millions. I see patients with Alzheimer's disease and I feel palpably uh, the urgency that patients and their caregivers have to have new products on the market. But that unmet need uh, shouldn't drive reductions in the evidence bar required to get to market. Many also fear knock-on implications. One reason that, that some people say they're hesitant for the vaccine is they don't trust the FDA in doing its job, which is really unfortunate in the case of COVID-19 vaccines because there, in contrast to Agilhelm, we have an enormous amount of evidence that the drugs are highly effective and are very safe. And we will not be forced to take a vet deadly vaccine! Today, American distrust of pharmaceutical companies is at an all-time high. It's more important than ever for the public to feel that the agency is on their side. The FDA has an important but tough job. There's an enormous volume of evidence that the FDA has to wade through. And I have the privilege to work with the FDA, and I know how hard they work on behalf of the American people. But some of the FDA's decisions are upsetting those working within the agency too. Third FDA advisor has now resigned after the approval of Biogen's Alzheimer's drug. In July, the FDA called for federal investigation into the way that Adjahelm was approved. Many individuals who work at FDA today who truly believe in the agency's public health mission are frustrated by an agency that too often puts the pharmaceutical industry's interests ahead of public health. Today, the FDA is at a crossroad, as President Biden is due to name a new head for the agency. We need a new commissioner, a new leader at the head of the organization that is pro-public health.